Hi, I'm Judith Bates, and I'm going to be talking about Jane Addams today. Jane Addams grew up during a time of the rural movement to the cities, and so you have an agricultural in move to industrialization, and that was a huge impact on her and the cultural context. Some of the major influences of her life were her father, Abraham Lincoln, the Rockford Female Cemetery, Toynbee Hall in England, and a bullfight. And all of these helped her to create theories, synthesize ideas, and realize that she wanted to take action on her ideas. Her philosophy of education was based on a pragmatist idea, which focused on common sense, practical experience, and that the ideas were research-based. She came up with a theory of socialized education, which is to rebuild a sense of community because in the rural environments, you had that natural sense of communities and everybody working together, but that had to be rebuilt in the urban environments because it wasn't a natural process. Vocationally based, because no longer were students learning from their parents trades, they now had to learn them in the schools or on the streets. To include social issues of the time, for example, industrialization has a huge impact. And so including that and how that impacted all areas of life. She thought it was important to preserve and appreciate migrant culture and to build communities that were based on moral capabilities and not only religious capabilities philosophies. And so though she had a Christian personal philosophy, she did not force that upon Hull House. Um, and she provided knowledge, just basic common knowledge, so individuals, even their mistakes and shortcomings, could participate in a democratic society. In theory to practice, she was a doer. She established Hull House, which was based on three principles of action beyond the individual level, um, an affectionate interpretation of material conditions. For example, in clothing wasn't, I want the latest and greatest, but rather focused on needing quality clothes for jobs and focusing on immediate problems. For example, housing, jobs, food. And so... Those were the main things that she did at Hall House. Um, and it was said from 1895 to 1930, the Adams name was attached in one way or another to the different reforms that were made. Some of the major areas that she impacted were child labor legislation, housing and sanitation reform, vocational and immigrant education, women's suffrage, and international peace. She very much agreed that diversity was important and should be embraced to have a positive and successful democratic society. And as such, she created a labor museum where adults could share their trades and their skills from their homelands and then show the value of the differences. There were some people who were against her. For example, um, newspaper reporters were looking for sensationalism. Manufacturers did not like that she was taking their workforce away of the child laborers. And political bosses um, couldn't bribe her, and she didn't like, they didn't like that. And men such as William James, George Herbert, Meade, and John Dewey were said to actually create her theories and create their theories, and then she would put them into practice uh, based on the whole roles, gender roles at the time. But through looking at different writings and such, it's, you're able to tell that she actually came up with her own ideas and influenced them. So implications, this is the big part, peace. To have a peaceful community, to have a peaceful life, to have a peaceful society, there's six different things that she recommends. Um, and she'll summarize them as loving, working, caring relationships, a growth mindset, sympathetic understanding and forgiveness, commitment to evidence and open dialogue, focus on lateral progress and listen with empathy. And this didn't mean that there wasn't any disagreements. This didn't mean that everybody always agreed. It means working through disagreements while being respectful. In the classroom, Lake um, came up with five very practical steps of things that can be done based on Adam's philosophy. 
to invite individuals from all viewpoints in the classroom to discuss their viewpoint and go out to them as well. So seek out those opinions to get a narrative perspective, to hear the stories behind the information, to engage in dialogue and to cre require creative brainstorming, imagination, that's the key, and cultivate relationships even if you disagree. And finally, Adams has influenced my personal philosophy of education, which is that education should provide students with basic academic knowledge, practical experiences, and the ability to critically think and problem solve while demonstrating social ethics to, to ultimately develop a student who can knowledgeably, respectfully, and productively engage in their local and global community.